Aha! That's right, this is me, DC LaRue, on a Pandemic Wednesday. It's June 3rd! How do you like that? June 3rd already. <clears throat> and this is my do up show. Now, I'm only playing that Lolita Holloway thing because I was listening to a, a tape my friend Robert up in Montreal did for me, and I just love it to death. So, I mean, I play it 100 different times a day. I do. It's like okay. get in the shower, play Robert's tape. But it's the same one all the time. You know, sometimes you play, you get a mix that's so perfect like that. Yeah. So, greetings. I hope everybody out there is feeling okay. Feeling okay? Feeling okay? Feeling okay? <laughs> now, you know, I have to do all this stuff here, so I just got to close this here. That's my Robert tape. Okay, good. Okay, now, <clears throat> now what? Well... Here we are. It was a curfew last night, eight o'clock in here in New York City. And it's been some wild week <laughs> since I was here last week. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> I mean, this is a week to write home about if there ever was one, huh? Now, I'm gonna start my do up, the roots of DC LaRue's do up roots. Here we go. So now, I decided to do a couple of shows in succession of devoted to like one doo-wop favorite group or whatever, okay? Most of them are groups. And I picked up the Flamingos first. Now, I'm just going to go right into it. I don't want you to chat too much. You know how I love doo-wop, and you know how it was a part of my youth. It was the music of my youth. Totally. That's it. I grew up with this, the radio, and my dog, and the door to my bedroom shut. <laughs> Locked sometimes. Locked so my mother couldn't disturb me. Turn that music down in there! Turn that awful music down! And that's why I had the pillow over my head. My ear to the speaker on the phone. It's speaker on the radio. Okay, the flamingos. Oh, the flamingos. Now, I'm going to play a couple of things. I'll interrupt it here and there. It, they, these guys, you know, each one took vocals. It depended upon the song. And there was like a baritone and a bass and a tenor and a, a, a falsetto guy. And it depends. Now, see, love, there's a th smoke gets in your eyes. The way they do this here, you know the song, it's an old standard. Oh, that's another point I wanted to get at. His, his vocal is so perfect that I, it's like I go, oh my God, who's that lead singer? You know, but they changed around a lot. So, and then what was this? Um, the other one was what? Mm, oh, there's so many great songs here. Uh, the guy who did, but not for me. Okay, let me start off with the first big hit, okay? They changed labels. They were on uh, Checker, Chess Checker out of Chicago for a while, and then they came and they signed with More Sleeping in New York, the record company was End, E-N-D Records, okay? And the first big hit for the Flamingos. Okay, did I turn this up again? I guess it, let me turn it up. Okay, now, <clears throat> oh, this one. Now, you have to understand, there's a couple of songs that came out during this era that, you know, were like the tail end of the Korean War, Remember the Korean War? No, I'm sure nobody remembers the Korean War. <laughs> okay. Uh, tail end of the Korean War. And like Soldier Boy and uh, I'll Be Home and uh, Casual Look and uh, Walk Down the Aisle and whatever. So this is one of those songs. Tail end of the Korean War. Uh, flamingos, I'll Be Home. Ugh. And this is when I fell in love with the Flamingos. Okay. They didn't do very many upbeat songs though. Like one or two, but I'll Be Home. I'll be home
I'll be home. Wartime. Korean wartime. End of the wartime. Now, I'll do a couple more from the first, I think it's from, the, yeah, the chess checker years. Would I be crying and lovers never say goodbye? These are very, you know, like, uh, end of the war kind of songs. You know, the soldiers are over there in, in uh, South Korea and on, they're fighting on the, the DMZ zone or whatever it is, you know. It was rough times. Wartime. Korea. They didn't even know what they were fighting for. Nobody does know what they're fighting for after time. Hello? Would I be crying, flamingos? <laughs> Oh, 
totally flawless, huh? Now, I want to, case in point, I just want to bring up a few, um, well, if you're listening, it's obvious, but you got to understand that when these rec we recorded, they were recorded in mono, no stereo, uh, in a studio, one great big room, microphone set up, early to up, if you listen to the instrumentation, it's drums, bass, guitar, and triples on the piano, clink, 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 and the voice. Now it's amazing how full these records sound. Isn't it amazing? With these lame microphones, and I'll tell you something else. <clears throat> We're so used to fabulous microphones today, you can whisper and hear, hear the, the vocal. Um, you had to sing your ass off. You had to sing your ass off. That's why I say you, you don't realize that this kid who was doing the vocals was singing his fucking ass off to get that energy because you lost so much because the microphones were so inept. Now, admittedly, digital transfer, digitally enhanced, but you can only work with what you got. And these things are just flawless. And I think back, I'm, I'm listening to them and say, oh my God. It's like, <clears throat> and they thought they had it all. They had, they didn't know stereo, they didn't know digital, they didn't know overdubs, they didn't know, let's put in the voice later, can we overdub the track, can we click in and change the vocal, can we auto-tune the vocal, <clears throat> none of that. This is all one take. Now, they may have done three or four or five takes, sometimes up to 10 or 12, who knows. But the finished product was one take from beginning to end, three minutes of flawless duo perfection. Eight. Now, <laughs> another uh, song from the war, Lovers Never Say Goodbye. Okay, here we go. Now, I'll buy the, the, war, the war years. Here we go. Flamingos. <clears throat> Listen to these vocals. Listen to the, listen to how full that group sounds. There's no overdubbing. They didn't know how to overdub. There was no overdubbing in 1958. Got it? Okay, got it. Here we go. Please wait for me. Oh, 
thing goes, <clears throat> lovers never say goodbye. My, one of my favorite two up there flows. Now, they don't do too many up tunes like <clears throat> Tiana the Belmonts or uh, Frankie Lyman the Teenagers or the Mooglows. A couple of other ones that I'm going to spotlight in, over the next coming weeks. But um, they don't have to. I'm just trying to think. Is Besame Mucho is a little bit up a little Spanish thing. Uh, let's see, what's where they require? Never say goodbye. Didn't this time go spy? Well, I'll go. Uh, a kiss from your lips. I think that's a, a kiss from your lips, and then we'll go into the, the later stuff the, the, on the end, okay? Now, oh, I was going to add, I'm listening to the track. Uh, they're experimenting with echo the, on the voice, you know, reverb at that point in time, like 70, 57, 58, 59. By the time that I got started recording, they had you know, lots of it, lots of different effects by six, the mid '60s, early '60s. But at this point, they just had only one or two options, and I think they used to put it more or less on the, the vocal group in the back. I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I was still in diapers. Okay, kiss from your lips, and then we'll go on to the more recent stuff. Recent, their next album, which was on end. Here we go. A kiss from your lips. It's just breathtaking. Are you listening to those harmonies? Those doo up arrangements? It's not just doom up a doom up a doom. It's like <clears throat> in that falsetto that goes way up and high. There are only five guys. <sighs> I get chills. I'm getting chills right now because <clears throat> um, no wonder I fell in love with this kind of music. You know, before this, what did I listen to? Doris Day, <laughs> you know, Rosemary Clooney. Lester Lannon, my mom liked Lester Lannon. She liked Tony Bennett. She liked Frank Sinatra. You know that kind of stuff. And so I like Joni James. But I, John, and now I fell in love with Joni James and uh, 
and Doris Day. I, I crossed over with them and I kept them with me because Doris Day is flawless, you know, so was Joni, Joni James in her own special way, in her own special way. Now, now, next, so the next album comes out and what they do, now when Lady Gaga came out with that thing with Tony Bennett, that duet thing, uh, did I like it? Well, I didn't love it. You know, I always, it, I think Lady Gaga sounded like, um, do you remember Keely Smith, Louis Prima and Keely Smith from Las Vegas, big act, Las Vegas act? She sounded like a Keely Smith. <laughs> People would say, Keely Smith, she sounded, yeah, she did, with, with Tony Bennett, which is, I think, why she, he liked her. Keely Smith was a great kind of like club singer, Vegas singer. Now, so when she did that album with Tony Bennett and all those, you know, the American Songbook, I didn't love it so much, you know, the whole package, the song, but I don't want to go into it, but I didn't hate it. But what I enjoyed and what I thought Lady Gaga was so wonderful in doing, she took it with her gazillion fans who were just used to her silly dance stuff and her electronic stuff. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, she introduced a whole new genre of music to those kids. And if it hadn't happened to me when I was listening to people like the Flamingos or Deanna the Belmonts, who did all the standards over the rainbow and whatever, that's how I got introduced to the classics. And I grew up loving all that kind of music. And it was because these doo people, once they got successful, wanted them to make the, themselves legit. And in order to play the big clubs in Vegas or whatever, they had to appeal to a different audience, and so they did the standards, okay? So when the Flamingos went to End Record, E&D Records, they had a huge hit. Maybe you remember this. I only have eyes for you. Now, I think the arrangements get bigger here, though. Mm, let me, I don't remember off the top of my head. Let me, let's go.
flamingos. The flawless flamingos. I only have eyes for Jewel. I only have eyes for you. Now, I, I'm running out of time. Big time. I'm running out of time. I've got four minutes left. I'm going to play two songs quick, okay? <clears throat> but not for me. Standard. Smoke Itch in Your Eyes. Now, I don't know who did the vocal on the Smoke Itch in Your Eyes, but I listened to it the other day, recently, when I was putting this collection together, and it just... I said, who is that angel singing that song? I, I don't know which of the vocal lead. There's five guys, and they all took turns, right? It was one primary one. But listen to the vocal on this, and then I'm going to go right into But Not For Me and do a quick goodbye, okay? It's 26 minutes. We have 30 minutes. It goes, it doesn't fly by nice. It does. <laughs> it goes by too fast for you to get bored. Smoke catching your eyes. Ah, the vocal on this. I die when I hear that song. That vocal is so perfect. Perfect. Flamingos. Now the strings, are, I knew there were strings in some of these tracks when they moved to New York City and recorded in New York City. Real quick, real quick, I got, it, I got two minutes left, but not for me. The Flamingos. <clears throat> then I'm just going to end the show, okay? Everybody back here on Friday, Friday, Friday. Pandemic Friday, okay? That would be Friday the, third, the, Friday the 5th. Here it is, but not for me. Flamingos, I hope you enjoyed this. Oh, I hope you enjoyed it like I enjoyed it. Not for me.
Oh, my God.